Nice. What's up guys over here at the hangar got a, a new little project we're gonna dive into here just received a present from edge performance headquarters there in Norway thank you Thomas um, I've got the new um, oil pump the larger oil pump that they just came out with now I was kind of hesitant to go with this because I have pretty good oil pressure on mine and you know, I thought, hey, if it's if it ain't broke, don't fix it, right? But after talking with Thomas, he uh, he, you know, made a case for a little more oil pressure wouldn't be a bad idea. Um, it's kind of one of them deals where eventually there's a place where you get to too much. And on the Rotax engine, I'm not exactly sure where that point is and what goes wrong. It could be actually fear of blowing up the oil. Uh, filter itself I'm not sure because I don't see anything else on there where it's really an issue so in my case on this edge engine I have oil squirters and those eat up quite a bit of oil okay because you're spraying oil on those pistons to cool them and it's turboed of course so you're feeding oil to that having all those things the oil demand is pretty high higher than it ever was from the factory because it didn't have oil squirters so the thought process behind this oil pub I, I know that's what edge was you know kind of working towards was Hey, we're at, we're, we need more oil to do the job we're doing with those oil squirters, so we need more oil pump. So, that makes sense. Um, they have two different sizes. Honestly, either one's an upgrade. They have one that's a little bit bigger, and that's for non-turboed engines with oil squirters and stuff like that, I believe. And then they have the biggest one, which is the one I got, and it feeds, um, you know, it's going to feed quite a bit more than the stock one. I'm sure, obviously, either one's an upgrade but we'll play around with this. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and break down the stock oil pump. The housing remains. I know that he's utilizing that, but I've got a different cover on it and I've got an intermediate piece that's gonna space this all out a little bit. And, um, and then it's gonna, and that, that spacing it out gives more room for that thicker rotor that's gonna run in there so it can move more volume and ultimately make more pressure. Uh, so, but I gotta take the whole thing off because the shaft inside that drives both oil pumps is driven off the cam and he sent a new longer shaft which makes sense it have to be so I've got to pull the whole thing off drive that shaft out and then put the new one in and then I can start restacking it you know with the new parts and kind of build up the new oil pump I notice he also sent this return line because it's going to be longer it's out further away from the engine and that's a hard line going down to the turbo tank. So that's included as well. Okay guys, just uh, taking apart the oil pump. So this is the outer piece from the, the 914 pump. It's a smaller rotor, the, the return pump for drawing oil out of the, the turbo uh, tank there. Uh, we'll continue disassembling here. I'm gonna focus more on putting it back together than taking it apart. Be very gentle there so we don't skin up any of these pins or anything. Alright, and this piece will slide off the pins there. So I gotta get this one out. And these can be a little bit of a pain to get out. The gears slide off the top and then there's a pin underneath, like this pin. You can see the groove in the gear there. The pins that drive the, the rotors, okay? So you gotta pull everything apart this way and then slide the pins out. First time I was looking at it going, huh, how does that work, you know? 
and I don't like to use tools and skin anything up here if I can help it. So um, usually I'll just take it over and you got to smack it a little bit because when it's full of oil, it's sticky, which is a good thing. It doesn't want to come apart. So anyway. The outer one just came off. And now I can reach in and grab this one. I should be able to pop it out of there fairly easy. Okay, I just had to tap on that shaft a little bit and it popped loose. Okay, so there's the, the other one. Now this one we won't be reusing because the new one is obviously bigger and wider than this. But I'm saving all this stuff, of course. Now, Let's see if I can get that pin out. There we go. Okay. This should be able to drive that shaft right out of there. Yep. There it goes. What you work that bigger rotor up out of there, okay, gently. And then I just had to take something and lightly tap this shaft out of the housing. Didn't take much, but it's just stiff enough I couldn't do it by hand. Those are the housings and this is all the bolts and copper ceiling washers and o-rings it gives you all kinds of new stuff here so that's good so here's the new man look how wide that is wow that's a huge difference check this out here's the new rotor setup to give you an idea let me make sure that if I put this together the way it was put together here, if there's any markings or anything. Okay, so the way he had it, oh yeah, the two marks go together, okay. So, look at that. Wow, that is a pretty serious difference there. And here's the other key part of this. So like I was saying, I envisioned what he did here because unless he was sending me a whole new housing and remade all that, which would be a huge project, the next thing to do would be to, so he's replacing this piece. Yeah, I mean, that makes sense. We don't need to have both pieces. So he's replacing this piece from the 914 setup. But what it has is, see, on the 914 one, this is flat. This is flush. The big rotor runs against that. And then like I was saying earlier, it's inset on this one so that you get more, you know, height in there overall. So yeah, that makes sense. Okay, very cool. Is uh, everything looks good and clean. Yeah, looks good. I'm gonna pre-oil it, so I'll grab some oil. I'm also obviously gonna oil everything, lube it real good as I put it together here. We'll use all the new O-rings and stuff he sent. I just had quote unquote overhauled this oil pump with the new engine and I went through it and put in new copper washers and o-rings and stuff like that but obviously I've got them here let's use them so let me get this one out and then um, we'll put in some new stuff and this is not what this says it is just FYI in case anybody's wondering this is my assembly lube for like putting oil lines together and just any of this kind of stuff. It's just a mixture of a handful of good different oils, mostly Sport 4, and then a few other like additives and other oils just kind of mixed in that are good. A little bit of synthetic and stuff that's just, you know, like I say, real good oil for multi-use, whatever. So get a little oil on this here O-ring. And, uh, and then we'll pop that sucker in there. Okay, and then um, actually we need to stop and do the shaft of course here before I get too far ahead of myself. Okay, so here's the new shaft and should just be a little bit taller. Yep, it is. It's just a taller version. Okay, so we'll get a little, little oil on that guy. And uh, so we can push it back through there. Hopefully that goes in nice. Okay. 
Just want to make sure, let me make sure I'm not forgetting anything here. Put the shaft in, put the pin in, put the rotor in. Yeah, that should be right. Okay, there it is. Popped right in there. And let me just uh, tap it back just a tiny bit there. And FYI guys, um, I'm sure there'll probably be some instructions when this thing is officially released. This has not been officially released yet. I've got an early model for testing. I'm sure there'll be some instructions or maybe he'll link to this video or something that might help people out and that's that's good with me. But I gotta get one of these pins down in there. Again, I don't like using metal to metal and stuff like this, but I'm just gonna be very gentle. I mean, I'm just barely hanging on to that. And those pieces are hardened anyway. You'd probably have to work at it to skin that up, but the way he had this, the mark and the mark were both facing down, so we're going to follow along with that. Not sure how much it matters. It doesn't look like it matters. Maybe one of those things that after you run it, you just have to make sure you put it back the way it was, and that's what's important. Not totally sure, but we'll just play it safe. I'm gonna get a little wool down there where that plugs into that there. And we'll see if we can get it to go down over it. There it is. Okay. Nice. Now, turn this a little bit. Yeah, it's immediately getting freed up a little bit. It was a little stiff. It's still stiff, but it's getting better. Moving along here, we'll grab these pins. Go ahead and drop them down in there. Got a little oil in one of them, so it's just trying to squeeze that oil out. It's making a little pressure. Next is going to be the new piece here. So we'll get a little oil on all that. Okay. Can't have too much oil on all this, you know, considering that's <laughs> what it's going to run in. So we'll get everything lubed up real good. Now we got to put this in, and obviously we, we took note that the, the marked one on here goes down because the underside of the gear is marked. So we'll drop some oil on the inside of this and on the outside. Work that in real good. Okay. And uh, there's the mark. There it goes. Okay. That's in there. Very good. And then, like I say, this is all sticking up a little bit because it is taller, but it fits into this recess in the housing. Obviously, this housing was machined to fit that just right, which I'm sure was a little bit of a trick. But uh, anyway, feel, well, feels like man, it feels like a nice fit. Goes together right, real nice. Didn't have to force it or anything, so that's good. Still turn this. Still stiff, stiffer than the old one, but imagine that's to be expected with it being new, fresh. And I imagine if I can turn it by hand, the engine won't have any trouble turning it. The cam is what drives it. And obviously you don't want to put like a huge load through the cam, but because it's already got a load on it, but I'm sure that turning that by hand is far less than, you know, like the load it takes to actually drive the the valve springs. Next, we drop another pin back in here. And uh, sometimes you have to turn this. If you notice, you know, this isn't in the center, okay, which is what makes this work and actually pump. So sometimes you have to turn the shaft until you have the hole lining up on one of the, the wider sides, and then there's room for the pin to go down in there and go over. Just a little FYI. It's, it's pretty obvious when you're looking at it, but just in case anybody's working on one of these. All right, so there you go. Put that in there. We'll put a little bit of oil on everything again here. You know, I think it's pretty, pretty lubed up. Now we'll take this um, secondary pump here. We're reusing that piece, and we'll fit that back over there till it drops in on that pin. Because I've cut three filters or so on this engine, and you know they're 
found very little, a few little speckles and sparkles here and there, but it's pretty clean. We'll try to keep that, <laughs> everything working that way, keep it happy, you know. We'll go for the next O-ring here, get some of that oil put on it. Not too big a deal, I suppose, to pre-oil them like, oh, 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 you know, O-rings that are on moving surfaces and stuff or have to slide over things, of course, you want to make sure they're oiled really well. These aren't really moving around, but it doesn't hurt to oil them. Now we have the new cover we're going to run. And again, I'm going to put a little oil both where the shaft goes and uh, on the surface that that gear runs on. Okay, there it is. It's down on there. As soon as I tighten it up, it squeezes those O-rings a little bit and then the pins all, you know, really get a hold of it and make sure it stays put. Right now, it's it sits up off of there just a little bit because, um, you know, you got to smash the O-rings down a little bit. Well, there it is. That's assembled. Um, this O-ring goes on the back here. It's pressurized out through here. This this cavity here is actually dry. It's not, you know, part of the engine internally or anything like that. So we'll carefully pop these suckers out, put them in the save pile, and then um, get some oil on these guys. Put some fresh O-rings in there. And, uh, and then we'll go back and put this sucker back on the airplane where you've got your temperature sensor here. I put a copper ceiling washer under there and you gotta make sure you get the right size that fits it. it, it it's, it's a fine line between too big and too small. But if you get that under there, it offsets that sensor and drops it back a little bit. And what I noticed was looking down in here, when you move that sensor back away from this feed to the galley, it just kind of makes sure you're not cutting off any flow to that galley because that's where all the oil you know starts and goes through the engine. So. A little tip there that's probably useless, but um, probably not a bad idea at the same time, you know? Okay, so when you go to fit this back on there, you probably saw the pin on that, um, you know, the back side of that shaft we put in, and that gets driven by the, uh, there's a groove in the end of the cam, so just make sure those line up, obviously. If it doesn't go in and seat down flat against the block, don't bolt it on. Okay, torque value for these is 10 newton meters bringing them up by hand to kind of compress that um compress those o-rings you know by hand a little bit by little bit i'm just kind of looking at everything and yeah it looks uh looks good it's starting to pull up flush here so i'll just work them all in there and of course i'm going to turn the motor over by hand but not until i go to reprime the system something to keep in mind Probably the most annoying part about doing this whole thing is you need to reprime the oil system. Probably, or you probably should. I'm going to do it anyway to be safe, which means you got to unhook the return line from the bottom of the engine, cap it off on the tank side, leave it open on the engine side so you can see when oil's coming out, and then you got to hook into the breather on the oil tank, put a little pressure on it, and pressurize the system, and then rotate it by hand. You know, standard, it's a standard deal for when you're priming a, an oil system on one of these engines. And that'll make sure you get oil fed back into it real quick so you're not cranking it dry or something. We're going to start putting connections back on. I've got the remote uh, oil pressure sender that's mounted over on the firewall. And I've recommended that before. But if you haven't seen any of those videos, huge recommendation. There's companies that sell a line so you don't even have to make your own line if you don't want to and uh, those senders will last a hundred times longer when they're not on the engine picking up engine vibrations. Edge actually sends a new uh, the return line from the sump from the tank on the turbo here there's a new line and I'm, I'm guessing it's longer because because this is all stuck out further that doesn't quite line up and trying to stretch one of those hard pipes to make it longer is uh, not not a fun time, not a good idea. So, awesome they included that. So I gotta take off a couple of these clamps, get that pipe out, and uh, and that's about it. I had good oil pressure on my engine, um, considering I had oil squirters and this turbo and everything. I think part of the reason why is I went to a lot of trouble to rig up this parallel cooler setup with high flow, Y fittings, 
that allow oil to be drawn through two different coolers. And that increased my oil pressure a little bit because with it being a suction system, that suction is a resistance. And if you can free that up a little bit, so I have a big cooler and a small cooler and high flow fittings. And I have no nine, no uh, 90 degree fittings in the system. I have a 60 and some 45s and some straights. And all that stuff does matter, you know, because again, on the suction side, it's a lot more of an issue than it is on the pressure side in some aspects. Uh, I had upgraded to the new style relief setup that Rotex sells. You can you can retrofit that into a, a motor that didn't have it. So I had the new style and um, with the cone shaped and the different uh, hollow bolt here and the whole thing. Anyway, I had three shims on it uh, to get that pressure I had before. Um, uh, Thomas said to start out with no shims and work from there. So. If I see like a 10 pound increase, like if I go from, you know, 63, 65 up to the mid 70s, I'll, I'll probably leave it alone there unless he wants me to shim it up even higher than that. Okay, so I rigged up my uh, setup to pressurize and re-bleed and uh, re-prime the system. You want to put like five, five to 10 pounds on here. I think they say like 15 is the maximum, but just put like five or seven pounds of pressure on the uh, oil tank and then just rotate the prop and I've always had them prime pretty quick doing that. Yeah, starting to see some oil coming out of there. So see, it didn't take much. Of course, the system was already somewhat primed, like I said, the oil coolers and stuff. Okay, let's do a crank test here. Prime the system. We'll crank it over, uh, see what kind of oil pressure we have while cranking. It's the top of that instrument there. All right, prop is clear. Let's do this. All right, 42, according to that, it was holding 42, so that's good. That's nice and high for cranking. All right, so I just fired it up, and uh, man, it's awesome. I always crank them before I fire them up to get a little fuel in the cylinders and get the oil pressure you know, built up before I start it. And man, first start of the day, everything was cold, so to speak, and it just instantly made oil pressure, went to like 42 pounds and fired right up. So that is, that's awesome. Okay, first quick test runs in the book. Uh, I didn't bother filming anything because I needed to focus on what I'm doing. Uh, I just took it around the pattern without the cowl on so that I could check the pressure and see if I need to shim it. It looks like I'm going to need one shim. I was actually seeing, oh, a couple pounds less pressure than before. However, I had three shims before, and that's what's setting the bypass pressure. So it actually makes sense. And the reason it makes sense is even though the pressure was down a couple pounds, the consistency across the board was much better. The pressure drop between revved up and you know, at a low RPM was far less than with the old pump. It also made less difference as the temperature changed. So what I'm seeing is that I have a lot of volume to work with, but the bypass is what's setting the pressure. Whereas before, I had the bypass kicked way up and the, you know, the, the lack of volume based on RPM and pressure and heat was what was dictating the pressure. So that's a good sign. I'm gonna throw a shim in it that should get me up to probably up around 70 pounds at this altitude, which I think is a good place to start, and then test going up high and test going lower, and then work from there, maybe shim it some more.
new oil pump's awesome, uh, working great. You know, uh, like I kind of covered, uh, pressures are just a lot more stable across RPM, temperature, altitude. Um, it's more or less staying a lot closer to like where the bypass is set than the stock pump, which is kind of all over the place. All right, just quick update here, guys. Um, so after I made the majority of this video, I changed senders. Uh, I had a suspicion that my oil pressure sender was not reading accurately. Uh, it was only a five bar VDO, which means it only goes up to about 72 pounds. It wasn't actually reading right there, but I think it was just maxing out a little below that in the mid 60s. Uh, bought a UMA sender, a lot more expensive, but it goes to 100 pounds. Installed that, pressure went up quite a bit, like 15 pounds. So I may even pull a shim back out. Uh, so as expected, this oil pump makes plenty of pressure, which you know, I was assuming it would, and my oil pressure was more stable across the RPM temp altitude. Now, uh, I'll do a little further testing, but uh, like I say, I may pull a shim, it's working great. Um, just got back from a, a really quick but awesome trip to Utah. It was only two days, we had some severe weather coming in, we had to get out for that. Unfortunately, it was an absolute blast. That has got to be some of the best flying in the world out there. Um, I have not flown in Alaska, and I believe Alaska is obviously got some amazing flying, but I would say Utah is uh, is up there on that list. Putting together a little video on that soon. Uh, I think you guys enjoyed, even though it was a quick trip. Got some cool footage, got to see some really neat places. It was a, just an awesome experience. So I'm looking forward to sharing that with you guys. I got some other footage here locally I shot the other day. Um, I've got all kinds of stuff I need to catch up on. And I was really just trying to go out. We've had some good weather, go out and just fly, you know, gather footage, um, enjoy it experience it and then you know the weather's going to be cold and snowy and crappy soon and i'll be catching up on that footage thanks for hanging out guys uh hope this video you know showed you guys something uh, those of you uh may be interested in this pump um you know big thumbs up for me it's working great i'll continue to keep you guys updated on it uh as i put some more time on it but uh it's uh looking like an awesome upgrade and uh yeah thanks for hanging out you guys know the drill i'll see you on the next one